Yo, this is Rick Mahorn, the bad boy, giving a shout out to my man Drew, Detroit Drew. Make sure you tune in on his YouTube channel, Detroit Drew, bad boy. Happy Monday, and it pains me to talk about this because I love Blake Griffin. I just want you guys to know who are on the same wavelength with me is that I don't hate Blake Griffin. I'm not holding anything against Blake Griffin. His body's betrayed him. He's not Blake Griffin. Watching these first six games, I can just tell this is this is not the Blake we know. This is not the Blake we love. Before I before I go in on it, I will always admire Blake Griffin for having such a positive attitude and mindset and never saying anything bad about the Pistons, even though we've been butt cheeks. I will always admire Blake Griffin for on one leg, coming back to the playoffs in game three, I was there, and making that series more competitive for playing good against Giannis. Giannis didn't go crazy against us when Blake was out there. Still wasn't enough, but a healthy Blake Griffin that year, maybe we won a game. Maybe we won two at home. It's just kind of like you don't know, but... Pistons fans should never, ever, ever be mad at Blake Griffin. He's done so much for us, but in reality, it's time to move on. I've talked about this a little bit, uh, but it's time to make a whole video about it. Shout out to Everything King. I knew he talked about this, like game two or three of Blake being here, saying he doesn't fit. And uh, right now, that's true. The thing that made Blake okay is when he was going off for 30 points every other night, he would give up 20 or 25, but he was winning his battle. Now he's playing 30, 40 minutes a game, scoring about 15 points a game, and giving up 20, 25 still. So now he's losing it, and it's a problem. This team is better both offensively and defensively without Blake Griffin here. Never thought I would see the day or ever think in a million years I would ever say these words out of my mouth, but Jeremy Grant is a better player than Blake Griffin right now. From what we have seen so far in the season, Jeremy Grant's been our best player. And he's in the most improved player conversation right now. Josh Jackson was in that conversation too. Hopefully he can come back. And hopefully this ankle injury doesn't keep him out too long. But he'll probably be out for a few weeks. It did not look good. But Blake Griffin has turned into what we've said, um, a Kevin Love, a Kyle Korver. And that's not what Blake is. Blake, he has improved significantly on the three ball. But he should not be shooting 10 a game, and that's it. Blake is still one of the best presence down low in the post I've ever seen. In recent memory, I should say. Not ever seen, but in today's NBA, when he's in the post, he's one of the league's best down there. Rather, if it's passing, he passes so much better out of the post. He always draws contact down there. The game against Boston, I've only seen him post up once, and he went to the free throw line. Like, when he still goes down there, teams don't know how to act. They can't control him. But... I don't know if it's a mental thing of him being scared to be injured again, but he's not down there. He's not posting anybody up. It's a high post up and it doesn't go anywhere. And then defensively, he's a liability. We've tried to hide him in the zone, but teams have realized like, hey, it's Blake Griffin, let's attack him. So that's gonna be the game plan against, for, against us for the rest of the year until Blake's gone, is attack Blake. That's what Marcus Smart said that they had the look in that final shot, it was Blake Griffin was on him. So they attacked him and Blake, he just fell. He didn't get his ankles stuck. He just fell. It's a problem. When I see people like Sekou Dumboya, who I know has got a lot of work still to do, only getting 10 minutes a night, who has been playing good defense pretty much all year long, and he still misses assignments. He's, he's only a couple years into the, his, his NBA career. He's still got a lot to learn, but you got to play those guys now. They're the better option. It's so bad that we drew a play out of a timeout for Mason Plumlee. Not knocking Plumlee. Plumlee did what he had to do, and he made both the free throws, and it worked. But never would I have thought if we would have had Plumlee here that he would be a guy we would go to in a crunch time situation. But that's just where we're at. Blake, he just doesn't look good. It just sucks. It pains me to see it because Blake's always been one of my favorite players since he came into the league. I always loved watching Blake put people on posters, and I was really excited when we got him. But the time has come that the young guys need more opportunity. 
Jeremy Grant has stepped up and has shown that I can be that guy you guys can lean on and go get buckets. He's just finishing so great at the rim. His layup is crazy. Plus, he's been shooting three pretty well. He gets so many wide open looks. It's been ridiculous. But it's time for the Pistons to move on from Blake. But here's the real question is, how do you do it? How do you move on from Blake Griffin? Well, there's a couple ways you can do it. And it's going to be on Troy Weaver's shoulders ultimately to make this decision. You can do a Josh Smith. You can wave him and cut him and stretch his contract out for a couple more years where you'll be paying him a salary every year. I really don't want to do that since he's got this year and next year left on his contract. Um, I don't think that would make much sense. Um, you know, it, he's not toxic like Josh Smith was. He's still a great teammate and good leader. So I don't really want to go down that route. But trading him is going to be tough because we're going to be comparing it to what we traded him for. We know you give up Tobias, a first, Boban, Avery Bradley. That first became Shia Alexander, and he's been balling out. Like, people are going to want that in return, and you're not going to get it. We have to realize, because I know a lot of you guys know we won't, but a lot of you guys aren't. You have to realize we're not going to get that return back for Blake Griffin. Not even remotely close. If anything does happen, it kind of needs to be an Andre Drummond-type trade. Where you get a couple of veteran players that are expiring, that would be best case scenario for a trade. If you can get a pick, the more the merrier. You might have to go the route where you take on a bigger contract. But, you know, I'd be okay with that, to be honest with you. Like, if we could get, like, an Andrew Wiggins, if, if Golden State was still interested in trading for Blake, because, you know, in the offseason, there was a lot of rumors about the Pistons trading up and that Andrew Wiggins would probably come here to balance with the contracts. At least Wiggins is able to move. You know, he's not the best player. He's overpaid. But at least he's able to move and be productive. It sucks that this is what we're talking about. This is where it's at. Um, but ultimately, I think the best decision is to keep him. Just limit his minutes. He played almost 40 minutes every night. And he's not putting up the numbers he's used to. If you keep playing Blake Griffin 30 plus minutes every night, he's not going to be available anyway. And you're not going to be able to trade him. He's going to be on the bench collecting those paychecks. Stop playing Blake Griffin so much. For one, this is a restoring. We're rebuilding. We're not trying to win games. And well, maybe, maybe we are. I, I don't know. Because every game has been close. But stop playing him that much. 25, 28 minutes a night where Blake Griffin needs to be at right now. You got Isaiah Stewart. Play him more. You got Sikram Dumboya. Play him more. You got Sadiq Bey. Play him more. You got Jeremy Grant. He's already playing enough. But you get the point. We have different guys that aren't getting opportunities the way they should. I, I think Stewart needs more minutes. Seku definitely needs more minutes. Play the young guys more. Let them get the experience. You're paying Blake Griffin right now to be a leader and a mentor to those guys. Let those guys actually play in the game for a decent amount of time. Seku played in the fourth quarter. Hit a big three to tie it up. Casey Yangs him. He was playing great defense, too. I see Isaiah Stewart came in, got a couple rebounds, locked down the paint, pulled him from the game. I know Blake Griffin's butt right now is not good, but Casey isn't either. His rotations, his substitutions are terrible. His minute management is terrible. And if anyone's watching right now and you think Dwayne Casey's done a good job here, show me. What has Dwayne Casey done to make this team better? His minutes are ridiculous. You should not be playing Blake Griffin 40 and 30 minutes a night right now. The guy hasn't played basketball in a year. He doesn't look healthy. If you keep this up, Blake Griffin will be in a wheelchair. He's one more knee surgery away from being done with basketball completely. It sucks, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think we need to move on from Blake? And if so, what's our best option? How do we do it? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, Instagram, Twitter, DSA members, DSA channel, website, all in the description. Check it all out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And that's the bottom line, because Detroit Drew said so. Peace out.